Hello, ready for the lecture? This is the third lecture of the 28th module, European Literature of the 20th Century. This lecture is on other European writers. First, let us talk about some Russian writers. In the 20th century, there were many brilliant Russian writers. At the beginning, let us talk about socialist realism. That is realism supported by the socialist party. Maxim Gorky, the author of The Mother, was the most important proponent of socialist realism. Socialist realism supported party ideals, showed that working class revolution will come, classless society will emerge. The mother is the story of Palaguaya, a mother who, after her son Pavel is arrested, comes to realize the good work that he was doing and she continues his activist work. At this time in Russia, there was a poet, actor, playwright, very important figure, Mayakovsky, Vladimir Mayakovsky. He was a major proponent of Russian futurism. There was futurism in Italy as well as Russia. Mikhail Bulgakov made history with the masterpiece Master and Margarita. It is regarded as one of the greatest novels of the 20th century. Boris Pasternak was not a favorite to the Russian government itself because he criticized Russia and he was awarded, he was given the Nobel Prize but he had to refuse it. Pasternak's most important work is Dr. Zhivago, a very complicated poetic novel about the fortunes of Yuri or Dr. Zhivago, personal uh, story of Dr. Zhivago, his love with his wife, Tonya, as well as his uh, mistress, Lara, beautiful love affair of, with two women. And he is caught in the uh, conflicts of history, history, geography, the snow-clad Russia, lives being torn apart and the magnificent beauty of love, romantic love. All these intermingle in this beautiful novel, Dr. Zhivago, which is also a very famous movie made by the uh, British filmmaker David Lean. Along with Pasternak, we should remember Vladimir Nabokov. He was also a very brilliant Russian writer of this time. Nabokov, you might know, is the author of Lolita. Lolita, Pale Fire, his autobiography, Speak Memory. These are very important works of uh, Nabokov. Lolita is the story of a pedophilic man, Humbert Humbert. He, in his childhood, fell in love with a girl who died and he was separated from her. And he continues to love little girls whom he calls nymphets. And he loves one Dolores Hayes, whom he calls Lolita. And they go around the country. He uses her sexually, but he says that she used him. Anyway, she gets separated from him. Later on, he goes and kills the man who took her away from him. She also dies at a very young age in childbirth. This man is incarcerated in the lunatic asylum for the criminally insane. And his memoirs is what we are reading as the novel Lolita. A very unconventional novel. Nabokov himself said, you will hate the author while you love the book. It is true. And beautiful postmodern language. Alexander Solzhenitsyn is a very important figure as well. He is the author of the famous novels, The Gulag Archipelago, One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, and the magnificent novel, Cancer Ward. Cancer Ward is set in a cancer ward in a hospital. The important poets in Russia at this time are Anna Akhmatova, Joseph Brodsky, etc. In Italy also, there was a group of very brilliant writers like Gabriel D'Annunzio, Benedetto Croce. Benedetto Croce was actually a philosopher and an aesthetician. You must have already heard about the playwright Luigi Pirandello, the author of six characters in search of an author. A 
director and a group of actors are going to rehearse a Pirandello play and uh, some actors walk into the room. These actors are looking for their author and these actors want to enact the play. The director agrees to help them enact the play so that their story will be completed. In this story, there is a father, mother and their son. The father and mother are separated and the mother has been living with a clerk. The mother and the clerk have three other children. There is a little boy, a daughter, stepdaughter she is called in the play and also a little girl who is called the child. And these are, there, there are very uh, disturbing relationships happening and things happening such as all this is a play, okay, okay, a play within the play. The stepdaughter becomes a prostitute and the father himself approaches the stepdaughter or prostitute. Finally, the little girl who is a child drowns. Uh, it is about, and the son who is from the first marriage is very upset with the family also. This is about the impossibility of relationships, meaningful relationships. It is about the incompleteness of people's lives. The story never ends. We go from trauma to trauma, you know. Another existentialist novelist in Italy was Alberto Moravia. There was Italo Calvino, a postmodern metafictional writer who employed magic realism in novels like If on a Winter's Night, A Traveller, Invisible Cities, etc. A semiotician and postmodern novelist who wrote historiographic metafiction is Umberto Eco. Umberto Eco is the author of The Name of a Rose, sorry, The Name of the Rose. The Name of the Rose is set in a historical 13th century Benedictine monastery. It's a historiographic metafiction term used by Linda Hutchin. What does that mean? It means postmodern novels that use history in a very metafictional manner. Foucault's Pendulum is another important novel by Umberto Eco. And he has also written The Prague Symmetry. That is another novel by Umberto Eco. In Spain, there was a very brilliant writer in the early 20th century, Gabriel Garcia Lorca. Lorca is the author of famous plays like Blood Wedding. And Lorca was executed by the Nationalist Party during the Spanish Civil War. The expressionist playwright August Strindberg from Sweden, I should not fail to mention. August Strindberg is the author of The Ghost Sonata, Miss Julie. Very important playwright again. In Portugal, there is the, playwright, uh, the novelist José Saramago. Saramago was also not a favorite with the Catholic Church or Israel or European Union because he criticized all these people. His important novels are The Gospel According to Jesus Christ, Blindness, Seeing. There is the Greek novelist Nikos Kazantzakis who is the author of Zorba the Greek and The Last uh, Temptation of Christ. The Last Temptation. That was also a banned book because it depicts Christ on the cross being tempted by uh, the dream of a normal life. These are all very brilliant writers of the 20th century that you should know about, that you should read about. I'm not going into a detailed exposition of these novel, novelists and novels. Please read about them for yourself and uh, make your own notes. That is the only way you can really study and remember. So that is about the 28th module, European Literature of the 20th Century. Thank you very much.